On Thursday, March 25, 2010, Jerry Greenfield, the co-founder of Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream, spoke at the Keefe Campus Center at Amherst College. His speech, entitled How Ice Cream Changed the World, detailed the history of the now-famous ice cream chain, from its humble beginnings in Burlington, Vermont, to its current status as a company known just as much for its philanthropy and community-oriented business model as it is for its wacky flavor names. So we thought, uh, you know, why don't we try to get together and do something that's fun, be our own bosses. And since we always like to eat quite a bit, we thought we would do something with food. We just picked homemade ice cream, uh, didn't know anything about it. We learned how to make ice cream from a $5 correspondence course from Penn State University. Uh, we, we discarded the idea of warm and picked Burlington, Vermont. <laughs> Beautiful place, home of the University of Vermont. It's about an hour south of the Canadian border. <coughs> and it was so cold all the time that there were no other ice cream parlors there. But that, that seemed fine to us because we figured we were going to be better off in a place with no competition uh, <laughs> since we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> we didn't have any job experience. We didn't have any business experience. We didn't have any ice cream experience. <laughs> We didn't have any assets, we didn't have any collateral. Uh, you know, it wasn't a great situation. <laughs> we opened up in May of 1978, and it was beautiful. It was a great summer, and we were making ice cream, we were scooping ice cream. It was fabulous. On a good day, oh, we could make about 10 batches of ice cream, uh, 50 gallons of ice cream. And then the winter came. <laughs> it's minus 20 degrees outside. And sure enough, people stopped buying ice cream. Uh, it was called Pops in Biswick, which stood for penny off per Celsius degree below zero winter extravaganza. <laughs> so the way this worked was when the temperature got below freezing, which is 32 Fahrenheit, but zero degrees Celsius, we started taking money off the price of an ice cream cone. And the colder it got, the more money we took off the price of a cone. But not even that was enough to get people. <laughs> uh, and we got through uh, that winter by selling ice cream to some of the local restaurants that had been asking for it. And then the next summer came, another beautiful summer, making ice cream, scooping ice cream, everything was great. Winter came, couldn't figure out what to do. Ben had another idea. Uh, he thought, that if we could package our ice cream into pint containers, that way he could sell it into mom and pop grocery stores. And then we got this big break. We got a couple of big ice cream distributors, one in Boston and one in Connecticut, to start carrying Ben & Jerry's. And it was really the first time we were going to sell ice cream in, in these major markets where we were, uh, you know, the local guys next door. So they told us this. and. Ben started laughing. He just thought this was hilarious. I <laughs> said, Ben, this is incredibly serious. Why are you laughing? And Ben said, I can't believe that Hagendas and Pillsbury is worried about little old Ben and Jerry's in Burlington, Vermont. And our feeling at the time was that a business is essentially a machine for making money. So that if we were to be as of much benefit to the community as possible, we should give away as much all flavors, all ranges, all around the world globally, we will be 100% fair trade by the end of 2013. And just because the idea that the good that you do comes back to you is written in the Bible and not in some business textbook, doesn't mean that it's any less valid. Well, thank you so much.